Hello, good evening. Welcome to Mind Your Character with Bossy D. Unishola Obasa. How has your day been? Welcome to the show that's always adding value to you. Never ever leaving you the same, but leaving you better. So today I am going to be discussing something very interesting. But let me bring the volume of my let me bring this down. I hope your week has been cool and I hope that your weekend is beginning on a great note. Welcome to the conversation I usually would have every Friday from between 5 and 5.30. I'm just going to make this a brief one today. And um, thank you so much to everyone who usually makes time to be a part of this. I don't take it for granted at all. Uh, thank you for everyone who joined all through the month of March. I hope you didn't get bored with the so many things about women, 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 women. Every time we came on live, we were talking about women. It's Thank you for allowing us, <laughs> for particularly those who are men, and thank you for celebrating women. So with the month of March has come and gone and all the values we've been able to share, it's time in this month of April to discuss something different. And this month of April, we are looking at corporate culture. Corporate culture. Some people call it organizational culture. And recently I got to know that some people call it company values. Look at it from anywhere you want, but company culture or corporate culture or organizational culture talks about those shared values that a company and the humans of that company have in common. Shared values, shared orientation, shared ways, shared patterns, and the likes of them so that's what we'll be looking at in this month and why is this so important today my conversation is even around the fact that do i even need to bother my head as an entrepreneur as a business owner do i need to bother my head about culture shouldn't i just begin the business start making money and grow the um, bottom line of the business, make it very profitable. Should I ever bother myself about what culture is? Yes, you should, and yes, you should, and yes, you should. And today, I'm going to be discussing something around, should you make it deliberate or default? Should company culture be default, be by default setting or by deliberate building? And in one of my meditations yesterday, I went online and I did a banner post saying that you do not build businesses to grow culture. You don't grow businesses to build culture. You build culture to grow businesses. You do not grow business to build culture. You grow call you build culture, pardon me, to grow businesses. I'll take that again. You do not grow business to build culture. You build culture to grow business. What does that mean? That sounds like just plain on words, but it's not plain on words. The point here is for everyone who is a startup person like myself, for everyone who is an entrepreneur, for everyone who is a business owner. There is this initial drive for us to just want to, let's just make it, let's just make these things work. Let's just get clients, let's just hire, let's just establish, let's just do this. And then it gets to a point along the line, you just find out that, uh -uh, why are things going the way they are? And sometimes it looks like your, your company does not look like what you can own, does not look like something that you can identify with. It's most of the time, your culture statement that is staring you in the face and asking you to get clear about it. So ask me, and I will answer you the question of should culture be by default setting or deliberate planning and creation? Then I'll tell you 
that great culture in an organization is better created than assumed. Is better created than assumed. So you do not assume culture. You make certain about it. You make certain the fact that you have a culture that can take you to where you want your company to go. There are certain things that help you start your business. They say what brought you here cannot take you there. There are certain things that you started doing from year one to five of your business. And honestly, those things did not stop you from making money. But from year five to year ten, they may stop you from growing. They may stop your the people in your organization for being, from being at their best. And then they might define, begin to define the organization as one that cannot be trusted. One of the greatest benefits that an organization can get for growing strong culture is trust. You gain the trust of your staff members. You gain the trust of your uh, customers. You gain the trust of everyone who is a stakeholder in and around your business. So we trust just ahead of you as a reward that your business should And you know, when a business is trusted, there is no end to the growth stability and sustainability of such a business because trust is a capital and it can be converted to profit at any point in time of the life in the life of a business so what is the point that i'm making today and what am i trying to say to you i'm saying that culture is better deliberate than default in setting culture is what you deliberately put in place it's called creation. Every time you hear the word creation, building, development, it gives you an idea. Or grooming, it gives you an idea that there's work to do because those words are verb words. So culture creation, culture building, culture development is a process of setting clearly stated shared values in place that anyone who would be part of your organization we have to align with and in subsequent um shows i'll be showing you there's so many benefits but today i just want to answer the question should i bother my head about making it deliberate and size yes should i bother about getting a misobasa or RCV to come and sit down with me and help me lead me through how to define the culture of my organization and size yes is it just because this Obasa needs to make money that she's recommending that the answer is no I am recommending that you have a definite defined clearly stated and articulated corporate culture because the reputation of your organization will depend on it attrition rate of team members will depend on it on the long run customers becoming fans and loyals will depend on it there's so many things that culture has in its trail and then the consistency of the way things happen in your organization will depend on it on the long run there's so much that it has under is wraps that you only begin to benefit when you start the journey of specifically clearly articulating your culture. So if I asked you, what is your company culture? What would you tell me? And if you told me what your company culture is, what if I asked your team members, would they tell me the same thing? So there are a few things that are like tests for me to know whether you truly have a well-articulated culture. So you get into an organization. It's easy to know the culture that pervades any organization after you have stepped in there and stayed for maybe a bit you can tell whether they have a definite culture about how they treat customers you can tell if it's a culture that is well defined and well integrated that everyone has internalized you will notice it from the gate man the way we greet you doesn't matter what you're wearing or not wearing if you're driving or you're walking in on foot you will notice it you will notice it when you get to the front desk the way the person will welcome you 
the way they would speak to you, the way they will attend to you, whether you are a buying client or whether you are just making inquiries. It will show in the way they will transfer you to the next person or the proper person you have come to see. It will show in how the CEO will talk to you. It will show in how the marketing manager will talk to you if you have come to see the marketing department. It will show in every single thing. If you are a new hire, for instance, you just joined an organization, it's so easy to know whether it is one of those parts of confusion organization where everybody comes with their own style and manner of doing things and there is no funnel to help them trim down into what is acceptable and that is owned by everyone that can now become the reputation of that organization. You can tell as a new hire joining a team, whether it's a family type organization, it will be easy to know. It won't take you time at all. If it's a place where gossip is a thing, you will soon know. If it's a place where rumor monging is, a, is an item, you will soon know. It will be so easy for you to notice over a period of time. You will know whether it's a place where managers are free to behave anyhow they feel. You will know whether it's a place where they are grooming followers or grooming leaders. Because culture never hides. What character is to individuals is what culture is to organizations. Culture never hides. Culture is like the film, the aura that an organization gives off to the public. And it doesn't matter what category of member of the public of that organization that you belong to. Whether you are a client, whether you are a customer, whether you are a partner, well, no matter who you are, it's so easy. And culture is real. Guess what? To begin to bring this gradually, gradually home, because I said it's going to be brief, we're hosting this from outstation. If I turn my camera now, you see all my team members. We are, we are, we are not so we're trying to do our, our Q1 report. So this is go just going to be brief. I needed to answer this question. And if you have questions for me, please ask. Uh, don't forget we have a lot to do this year. You have taken too long doing things anky panky. You have taken too long doing things wah 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 like one of my colleagues would say back then at punch. Doing things just the way it comes. Doing your accounting just the way it comes. There is no culture item around accounting. There is no culture item around consistency. There is no culture item around just about anything. The time for you to understand culture and give it its place of honor in how you run your business, lest that business dies before you. Businesses that are allowed to have a multiplicity of culture that are not honest will suffer confusion and instability. So, answering the question, should I opt for default setting or deliberate culture building? I would say be deliberate. When it is default, let me give you an example. Everywhere there are human beings. I was still saying uh, at our session before I came live, everywhere there are human beings, there is culture. Why? From secondary school and primary, they taught us that culture is the way of life of a people. So everywhere you see human beings, culture is there. There could be culture of gossip. There could be culture of silence. Do you know the danger that culture of silence does to an organization? The most important information, we hardly ever get to the most important point for the most important reason at the most important time. Everybody will say something like, nothing concerns me, nobody asks me question. Silence. So in that kind of environment, when you permit a culture of silence to pervade, of course, most of the time, culture of silence is not intentional or deliberate. It creeps in. It could be as a result of the excesses of, of a particular leader. Could even be that of the owner of the business. They could be breathing down so much heat in the organization that people feel that I am respecting myself by not saying anything. So you see something, you never say something until the business crashes and everybody leaves and the pain is yours. As the owner of business so when i'm telling you that culture is something that you should be intentional about that you should spend money on that you should commit yourself to 
then I know what I'm saying. Wherever people exist in an organization, there is culture. But is it a culture that has been well harmonized? Or is it culture that everybody is interpreting the way it feels good to them? So, when people interpret it the way it feels good to them, that's called default setting. But when culture is understood intentionally, designed deliberately in an organization, you can say that, oh, in that company they have a family type environment. And these days, there is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful award that companies that matter globally always strive to win. And that is the award that, that is referred to as best, best places to work. So when your company is given the award of one of the best places to work, it is actually based on culture. They come and see your culture. They look for a way to assess your culture. They look for a way to evaluate things. They get feedback. So a well-intentioned corporate culture factors team members in as well as leaders. It is a win-win from owner to managers to leaders to everyone in the line. Should corporate culture be default? No. It will be too crazy. It will be too scattered. It will be too unorganized. And you know, when you call something an organization, a company, an organization, yet it has unorganized, unpackaged, unrefined, unintended, and not deliberate culture, then there's confusion just ahead. There's confusion just ahead. So, what I'm here telling you this evening is that this month, I am walking you through everything you need to know, yeah? Everything you need to know on the side of free. <laughs> but there might be some things that you cannot possibly just take from hearing me and they become a thing. You will have to call me in to come and assist you. You have to call my organization in to come and assist you. You know that I'm a character development teacher and coach, but you also know that I do a lot for companies in terms of helping them build a culture that can end the trust of the publics that they serve. When your culture is default, on a default setting, it is exposed to sneak in. S-N-E-A-K-I-N-S. Sneak in. Sneak in means that when you suddenly find out that there's a pattern that has started in your organization that was never there when you started and long after it has started affecting your business you now start asking yourself questions that when did things start happening this way when did we start lagging behind on this and you know that's because you do not have a culture custodian or a culture supervisor that is helping you take cognizance of how things are changing because culture is never static culture is progressive culture has to do with people and because people are not static culture is not static culture is not static so default no deliberate yes should i be default about culture in my business no should i be deliberate of course yes what should I do to show that I'm deliberate? Beginner's orientation. You need to begin to tie it directly to what the, what's the vision of this organization? What's the mission of this organization? Well intended. Then what are our core values? What are the things that we share together? How is work done here so that work is, term, is termed meaningful? How can progress be made? And the rest of them. Once you are able to answer those questions and you are able to audit where you are currently, there are a list of questions that you need to answer that will eventually begin to push out from you how you want the company culture to be exhibited or modeled. On another day, I'll be taking, I think next week, I'll be taking the session on who should champion culture conversations 
in an organization. We will do that next week. Who should champion culture? Who should be the culture custodian? Who should be the one speaking of for culture? Who should be the most committed to culture? How can culture thrive and how can culture succeed? That will be next week. One of the most important thing you must also know about culture is when you see organizations where people seem to have what looks like a DNA, dominantly needed attitudes that they exhibit, you find out that it's a very in well-intentioned and deliberate company when it comes to culture. Culture is huge. And this month, we're out to have an exciting journey. I will not be able to do beyond this because it's just a short thing that I'm making today on culture, but I can assure you that this is going to be an exciting journey. I promise that I will continue to put write-ups there on my wall. Our CV will continue to give you designs and all what not. We will even do some of our showpiece of what we are doing as a team on corporate culture. So you can also see from a, an exemplary point of view. We are growing, but we understand that with culture, we seem stronger than the ordinary organization should be. It's all based on how real and how truthful and how broad our culture has been. Culture is huge. I'll finish on the note of a quote by uh, Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker has this fundamental quote on culture. And it says that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. Go ahead and keep strategizing. It's good for your business. But if you do not create a culture that will sustain the results of what your strategy is putting together, the company will still come to not. So culture, corporate culture, organizational culture is huge when it comes to success of a business, stability of a business, sustainability of a business. So I'm calling out to everybody who is venturing into business like I have done and you are working really hard to make sure that that business breaks even. Don't forget that there's an aspect of this that you might not be paying attention to. Maybe because you don't know how much it will impact on what you're doing. It is called culture. Why is culture important? Because for everything that you have assembled as capital, the greatest capital that you have is the human capital. And managing the human capital is crucial to determining how your financial capital will thrive, how your social capital rating will go, how your intellectual capital rating will go, how your business will eventually be talked about. So there's a whole lot that culture has to do. It is very integral. So I know that a lot of the times people don't know how to begin to go about it. We are offering to assist you as an organization in this month of April. So this for us at RCV is Culture Reorientation Month. We are reorientating the public about the importance of corporate culture to their business and how that if you allow the wrong culture in your customer service for instance you will begin to lose customers it's so easy you just have one person who is very saucy who managed to find their way into your customer facing team and if the person is a leader or they are an influencer there are some team members that they don't they are not leaders or managers but they influence they can rally people around if that person has a strong enough effect, others will begin to do things the way he or she is doing it. And before you know what is happening, the entire department would have gone from customer service creation of good service to making your clients leave your business. If you are not informed or on ground, before you know it, you'd have lost so much to poor corporate culture than you should. 
So corporate culture is very, very, very integral to the success of business. One of the things that makes a lot of conglomerates what they are is that they have come to understand how much they need to buy in into organizational culture and making it effective. So don't just tell me that you have a culture. I can assist you in making your culture effective and efficient. So some people have culture that are word of mouth. They can say something is their culture, but it's not activated. You cannot see it in the way they do business. You cannot see it in the way they serve clients. You cannot see it in the way their team relate together. You cannot see it in the way they relate to regulatory bodies. You cannot see it there. And then what about people who think they have healthy cultures and then find out that unhealthy culture has sneaked in on the organization. It's a huge work. And for everyone who has a HR department, this is a support service that you will be needing. Culture is huge. Your strategies are not safe as long as culture is not well done or well fitted into the way you do your things. Culture, Peter Drucker says, will always eat strategy for breakfast. That will be all that I have for you today. Feel free to leave me comments and I will be replying to them, whether on Mind Your Character Instagram or on Bossa De Olushola Obasa. You know by now that all I'm signed up to do is adding value to you and your business and in very, very interesting ways than you have ever thought of. So let's talk. You can reach me on 081-061-20819 and then you can leave a message for me. You can also do well to please look us up on Mind Your Character on YouTube. That is the platform where we have plenty of resources that you can take advantage of. Many of the videos I'll be doing this month will also be found there. So feel free to enjoy many of the free stuff that we have for you. It's our delight to know that you're there and we are committed to ensuring that you and your business are better. I like to say my goodbyes now, but before that, I want to thank everyone who has joined. I can see my Oga, Mr. Cosmos, uh, Shiji. Thank you so much, Mr. Kunda. Another Oga of mine, Mr. Aki Olukule. I've seen Mrs. Yetunde Ononuga. Thank you. And I've seen my team members as I mean, oh, Mrs. Uh, I've seen Madam Wemimo Adebiyi. Thank you. Thank you, every single person on Bosede Olishola Basa. Thank you to everyone who has joined also on Mind Your Character. Thank you, Timaru CV, from Mr. Fatubaro to uh, Jerry to Omolara to Temilolua and to Operations, who is not able to join because she's operating on all of us right here. All right, so thank you, everybody. It's a great. Friday and I want you to have a very very beautiful weekend. Don't forget to reach out to your phone and let's talk. Culture is huge. Everywhere people are, culture is real. But is it a culture that will take your business to where it is going that you have right now? If it is not, don't watch things go the, the way you do not want them. Begin to be deliberate about culture. That's the message I brought you today. It's a good time to say goodbye, and I'm going to make my music play louder. Thank you, everyone. Stay blessed.